Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Today, we're visiting the crown jewel of our Global Geek Tour, the Kwa Chong Bay neighborhood, which includes the famous Seg Market, which is behind me. Now let's go in and start buying stuff. So most of the parts are in cases, and then behind they have big bulk supplies that they can count out. If you need a whole lot, then they'll go somewhere else and get some and bring them to you. The cases slide open, and the samples are in here. You can try it out. Shock just picked up 10 directional uh, joystick buttons. And they weren't here, but a runner got them from somewhere else and brought them back here. Okay. Okay. And a, a reel of these multicolored LEDs. And it comes with a little controller, it's a control box, and the control box costs uh, 20 RMB, and the reel of 5 meters of LEDs costs 100 RMB, in total about uh, 15 or 20 dollars for everything. It's just going to test it out for us and show us that the reel works. So everybody here has a card, and each stand has a number, and the number's on the card, and also here on the corner of the stand. We get a card from everybody and on the back we write what they had that we liked the most and the price of it so we can get back here and buy it at the end of the day. A score so far is a reel of multicolored LEDs and a couple bags of potentiometers. Now we're going to go upstairs and see what we can buy there. These are touch panels for LCD screens. I think they're resistive. This stand has a bunch of cool test rigs that you can use to put a circuit board in and the pogo pins come down and it tests the board to make sure that the circuit's working. We just bought a small USB microscope for inspecting circuit boards. It has zoom that can be done on the computer, it can capture video and also photos. This stand has some breakout boards for little tiny potted chips. They're potted onto the board and then broken out into VIA so you can tap into it. These are the kind of things you see inside calculators that are really inexpensive and glued directly to the board. This stand has all sorts of sockets for surface mount chips. We even found one in here that's BGA. That's really cool. There's a huge amount of activity here. There's restaurants on every floor and families hang out and eat in their stalls. This stand has all different widths of Apton tape. This is a heat proof tape you can use to hold chips down. We used it when Shock tried to solder a BGA chip. We saw these light boxes in Hong Kong too. We need a new light box for the workshop, but we've been checking these out and these are color correct and they have a camera mount on the top. Uh, they're really nice. Uh, the smallest one is about $100. First two floors have the electronic components. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth floor and on up, they have consumer electronics like computers, motherboards, USB gadgets, all sorts of stuff. The Seg Market is just one building in this neighborhood. Here we have a whole building dedicated to LEDs. We're going to go inside and check this one out too. This building really is six floors of LEDs and also everything you need to go with LEDs. So they've got little tiny LEDs like you find anywhere, big reels of LEDs, giant power LEDs and fixtures to put them in, as well as resistors and holders, reels of color changing LEDs, just about everything. It's amazing. This is a stand that has mailers. We found very small mailers for using it with our PCBs, Free PCB Sunday. And here's one that with a pre-printed customs declaration form that has already checked gift. It's awesome. We've been walking around the market for about half a day, and now we've hooked up with Tully and Liao, who works at Seed. Uh, uh, Liao, mm -hmm. what, what do you like about the markets? Oh, it's huge and uh, the price is, is very cheap. You get to see and touch everything yourself. It's like walking into like what DigiKey should be. The suppliers here will do uh, uh, COD, so cash on delivery. They can deliver to your hotel next day, but you need to be there. And tell, can you tell us about bargaining? My, my philosophy is uh, guanxi, right, which is really just means developing relationships with people. But once you develop relationship with somebody, uh, then you find that there's one price, no matter how many you buy. They don't care how many you buy. Like Ten or a thousand is the same price. Actual probe clips that we're using on the bus pyre and the logic circuit cable. This is where they come from. There's a ton of different connectors for SIM cards and SD cards. Here's another button and switch stand. And it's a, a beautiful selection. You can see each one and figure out how it's going to fit in your project before you design or while you're designing it. And they have buttons with pictures on them and they'll accept customization. It's a $30 setup fee and then there's a minimum order of 10 and each button costs about $2.50. This is the third building we've been to. This is where Seed buys a lot of their LCDs, connectors and tools. We found one of SparkFun's suppliers. It's also a supplier for Seed and somebody Tully knows as well. This is a tool shop where Seed buys all the tools for their workshop. They've got soldering irons and crimpers and all sorts of stuff. 
Wow, that was totally overwhelming. With 10 buildings, this is by far the largest electronics market in the world. David Lee was totally right. You can't visit this place in a day or even a week. Thanks so much to Tully and Liao for showing us around, and thank you for watching. We'll be back in the workshop next week. Station, which is the crossing point between Hong Kong and mainland China. The reason we stopped here is to tell you a little bit about the crossing procedure. You can't just go into mainland China. About a month before the trip, we went to the Chinese embassy and applied for a visa to get into China. This isn't something you can do last minute. You have to plan for this trip. That's one of the things that makes going to Shenzhen so special. Ji Chang. We're in the basement of Emar, which is just one of the stores in the Yangshan shopping center. In the basement you have electronic components, but upstairs there's about four or five floors of computer parts, TVs, laptops, cell phones, uh, just about any sort of electronic gadget you'd want. Most of the shops show a display in the window of what they have, then you go in and ask for it and they get it out of bags on the wall. It's not just through hole either, they have a huge selection of reels and surface mount parts. Where we are now is called Sunan Plaza. It's basically a maze of computer part vendors. They've got motherboards, memory, hard drives, video cards, coolers, anything you need to build a computer. Yongsan is huge, and if you're into gadgets or computer parts, you're not going to be disappointed. But the selection of electronic components is pretty small. So now we're going to head over to Hackerspace Seoul, and they're going to show us around a second, even bigger electronics market. So the space, actually, right now, we're fully member supported for our, our current space. But to get started, in other words, to get members, a very few core members had to sort of pull ourselves up from the bootstraps to show people that we were doing or could do um, interesting projects. <laughs> They did away with these things so that you can actually use what's uh, sold and uh, instead of making custom. They managed to take about like a quarter off of the cost that you usually pay. And then they pay people to attend the workshop and learn how to build themselves and uh, work this out and take the um, printer home with them. This um, works in the same fashion that cicadas, the same mechanism. And so they have these clicking ribs and every time they click, it makes a sound. Uh, so they all run in sequence. That's very cool. So. Put outside Hackerspace Seoul is a tools, materials, and electronics part market called Changji Chang. It's way more what we had in mind when we hear electronics part market. We're in Changji Chang which is an absolute maze. Akihabara had a couple buildings, like the radio center, with a labyrinth of little stands inside. But this is multiple city blocks covered by nothing but labyrinths of electronic stores, lots of LED shops, uh, CNC cutting machines, plexiglass cutters, metal cutters. There's a big emphasis on tools and manufacturing here, more so than electronic components. It's really hard to get a good shot because there's motorcycles flying through this all the time. We're on the second floor of a building with bulk electronic parts. This place has a totally different vibe than Akihabara. There's all these little glass rooms and people have displays out front. Then you go inside and tell them what you want and they pull it out of these giant bags that are on the wall. Very cool. Uh, Toledo Market is more located with other markets next to each other. So they, for example, they sell like acrylics, PVCs, and then fabrics, like you name anything. So it's located right next to each other, and they have a large, a couple of markets, they um, specialize in electronic parts. Yongsan Electronic Market is like, they have more consumer markets, but they do have electronic market in the basement. So I would say it's much difficult, um, it's really hard to approach Cheongdichon Market, but they got better stuff and more stuff. But um, Yongsan Electric Market is more approachable for beginners. This place is insane. It's a winding maze. Every time you turn a corner, there's four more corners. Here we're at a five-way intersection between electronic streets in every direction. This is a washer. Mm -hmm. Washer and vivette. 
various rivets, the copper rivets. Everything we have. One of the cool things about Chung Ji Chung is how much work is going on. They aren't just selling things. People are laser cutting acrylic, machining metal, and blowing glassware. One thing people always wonder about are prices. So we've been checking on the internet as we walk around. And things aren't cheap here. They're no cheaper than you get them online, and usually they're more expensive. The reason you come is to check things out and to get them today, uh, not to get things cheaper. Totally by accident, we stumbled into this building. It seems to have 50 or 60 shops that all specialize in restoring video games. The building behind me runs the whole length of Chunga Chung. It's four stories tall. The first two floors are audio equipment, household electronics, that kind of stuff. But the top two floors are a warehouse for service mount parts. Akihabara didn't have anything like this. It's amazing. Let's go check it out. Here you can just come and buy stuff off these reels, buy the meter. There's just about anything, and it's sitting here on a big rack. With Yongsan and Chung Ji Chung, Seoul has no shortage of electronic parts. Chung Ji Chung rivals Akihabara in both size and geek factor. A huge thanks to Dan and Hackerspace Seoul for showing us around, and thank you for watching. We'll be back in the workshop next week.